Good evening Bahrain. I'm Bernadette from Gulf Brands International and you're watching Wine Online Wednesday and we are now on episode 18 and it's Discover Sicily with Daluca Wines. So I've got a lovely set of wines tonight um, all from the Daluca brand. Uh, we've actually got two sparkles and two still wines. Now Sicily is a fabulous wine producing area and it's got a lot of nuances and little traits going on of its own so it'll be very interesting to get into them. Our two still wines tonight are from Sicily and our two sparklings are from the north, from Veneto. So I think we'll start with a little glass of bubbly. Very good for the evening, don't you think? So this is the Daluca Prosecco, everybody's favourite bubbly from Italy. So we're going to see tonight what makes it so popular, so nice and so delicious on a Wednesday evening at seven o'clock. Now I just want to show you something. Here is a standard glass that I usually use for white wine. You can see it's quite narrow and here is a perfectly shaped flute, kind of a tulip shape almost for wine. So if we pour into this glass so you can see it's quite wide so the the bubbles the froth spreads across if we pour into this glass we get a lovely lovely little bit of theater see how it comes up okay not going to get carried away there so you can see the difference in the two glasses this one where the bubbles are still rising up from the bottom of the glass. Okay, this one is looking quite flat, not so appealing. I think we'll go with this one. These glasses are actually purposely made that there is a tiny little knob of glass in the very base where the bubbles are then, they attach themselves and then keep releasing from this little tiny nub right at the bottom of the glass. And you can see the bubbles are still coming up. The froth on the top is called the mousse, by the way. Nothing to do with chocolate or small rodents. So here's a lovely glass of Prosecco. What makes Prosecco so special? Well, first of all, Prosecco is also the name of a grape. And Prosecco was made from Prosecco until 2009 when it was decided that the grape name would revert to Glera, which is the real name of the grape, and the wine name would be considered Prosecco. The region is Prosecco, and uh, legislation was enacted to make sure you can only label your product as Prosecco if it comes from that region. If it is at least 8.5% alcohol, and if it has at least 85% of the Glera grapes. If you don't have that, no Glera, no Prosecco. You might find some product like Australian Prosecco, very scary stuff, it's just, I mean, it's bubbly, it's great, but it's no way you can call it Prosecco. So this legislation was enacted to protect a lot of copies, so you know you're getting real Prosecco. So the Glera grape is a, greenish greenish grape um, it's in the north of Italy in the Veneto region just north of Venice uh, where Prosecco comes from um, our Prosecco tonight is from Treviso and I think ours is a healthy about, oh it's an 11% alcohol so it's well above the 8.5 which is good because it helps have some more flavour and it develops better. And it's 100% clearer, so we're not messing around with any, any other grapes here. So let's see what it's like. Oh, now, when you smell, you, it's almost as if the, the aromas are shooting up your nose. Obviously, it's, it's the little uh, fizziness that's lifting the aroma up, coming to meet you rather than you trying to smell the wine. Oh, it's lovely. It's got some apples and pears. Mm. 
Hmm. Bit of honey. Bit of lemon peel. But I think the honey, the honey was more on the nose than the palate. Try again. Hmm. Oh, it's lovely. That is going down a treat. So, if you do ask for Prosecco, make sure you get Prosecco. And not all sparkling wine is Prosecco, and obviously Prosecco must be sparkling wine. Um, the Glera grape itself has got lots of different relatives and clones. It was also called the Longo, meaning the long grape, uh, Tondo, meaning the round grape, and even Nostrano, meaning um, our own grape, uh, our local grape. Uh, so there's plenty of good fruit in here. Oh, I think that's very nice. Right, shall we move on? So uh, that's Prosecco. Now we're going to Sicily. Bella Sicilia. The island of Sicily is right down to the south of uh, Italy. It's, if you know your map of Italy, it looks like a, a large boot and off the toe is a big kind of triangular shaped island called Sicily. Actually, it's pretty big compared to Bahrain because it's about 25,000 square kilometres. While I think Bahrain is uh, 800 or something. So what's so special about Sicily? Well, it is Italy and it isn't. It's got its own culture and the Sicilians celebrate the good life. Um, it gets a lot of sun. It's a very colourful place. It's very passionate. They love music. They love good food. And they've even got their own dialect, which is slightly different from classical Roman Italian. And this is where the Daluca gets its inspiration. Um, so you can see on the top of the bottles, we've got these lovely little flower petal designs coming through and there is a logo of a sun so it's quite a stylistic sun pattern and that's taking its inspiration from the sun in Sicily because it is very hot and the sun gives life to the island so also if you look at the labels you'll see there's this fabulous colorful design um, this is inspired by a card game in Sicily called Scopa, uh, which all the locals play. And it's like playing with a standard pack of cards, except all of the cards are decorated with these fabulous, colourful images, usually of uh, this lovely a plume of leaves and feathers. And this is a, a beautiful vase. Again, really strong colours and everything. So this is where the Daluca gets its identity, its passion. So in Italy, we're going to go into the island, down towards the south, into a place called, an area called Ragusa, a town called Vittoria, and we're going to go to a winery called San Teresa, which was founded in 1697. <laughs> um, the original family are obviously not making wine any longer, and the current winemakers took over in about 2001 and they've been working on the Daluca brand ever since so they were very fortunate that you know that it was fabulous wine vine growing area and this is how they came up with their lovely Pinot Grigio. Pinot Grigio from the north of Italy is a dry minerally style. Pinot Grigio from Sicily because of the sun the heat you're, you're going to find something uh, with a little bit more fruit so let's get into it and see how it is. Very pale colour. Lovely, almost transparent. See how it is on the nose. Mmm. Ah, oh, um, some green apples. Um, grapefruit. Yeah, grapefruit. Mm. Oh, wow, it's a juicy, juicy finish. And it's actually got a little bit, a bit more 
wider texture than northern Itali Italian Pinot Grigio. There's a little secret here because they've put in 15% of Vognier, which is an aromatic grape from the south of France, but that they are nurturing now in southern Sicily. So what is Vognier bringing it to us in here? If you pick up on the nose, there's some, a little flowery note of honeysuckle maybe, honeysuckle in bloom. And then on the palate, hint of apricots. You know that little juicy feel as it goes down? That's contributed by the Vonnier. So it just, it gives it that more fruit forward style. Sicily, Sicily is actually considered the new world of the old world because it's very much in the old world part of the winemaking world. Probably uh, the grapes there were brought in by the Greeks, I think, at the very beginning. So it's been making wine for a very long time. But they like to go with the new world style of very fruit forward and easy drinking wines. Right. Okay, so very nice Pinot Grigio. Let's move on to our red. Now, this is interesting. We've got this lovely bottle here, and this is Nero Davila. Uh, the grape is Nero Davila. Uh, it's also called Calabrese, and some say the origin then is from the area in southern Italy called Calabria, um, and others say that the Greeks somehow dropped it off in Sicily and it flourished. Uh, Nero, black, Davila, of the town of Avila. That's another connotation of where it could have come from. So what makes this work so well? If you like a full-bodied wine, like a Cabernet, a Syrah, the Pinotage that we tried recently, there's, there's a lovely round, full-bodied, full-on fruit. I think this is what we should be picking up here. So the grape itself, up until about 2000, was used in blends. It wasn't highly respected. Then obviously winemaking uh, over and over, as, as the vines got older, the fruit got more mature and the quality increased. Then it started a new life as a mono varietal as in a single varietal. So you see these Nero Dablas coming up rather than an anonymous blend. And actually this, this grape has done very well in South Australia, where it appeared around 98, between 98 and 2000, uh, started winemaking there. Now the style from Australia will be a bit on the lighter side because the vines are not that old. While in Sicily you find old vines, they're just in their home environment and they're loving it there. Um, actually, the climate in Sicily would be closer to South Australia than to, say, the north of Italy. Uh, the island itself, it's got a north humid, north, the north coast would have humid, cool weather, and the south coast would have hot, dry weather, governed by the winds. We've got the, um, the Maestral coming down from the northwest, and the Sirocco coming up bringing the hot winds from the Sahara. Enough about geography, let's have a look at this. Look at that colour, beautiful, dark, uh, Morello cherry colour, I think you could call it. Oh, yeah. And the edges aren't, aren't even transparent, it's colour all the way out to the edge. So let's take a little nose. Oh, um, cherries. Ripe, ripe plum. Oh. No oaky notes. Hmm, just full on fruit. Let's, let's get into it. Hmm. What you get on the nose, it's coming through on the palate. But the sweetness has been played down. So you're getting sweet aromas. You're getting like a fruit salad of red fruits. And then on the palate, mm. um, there's just a trace of pepper, but it's, um, it's white pepper, very light pepper, not, not black 
uh, full on ground pepper, just a very, very light hint. Now, this has not been anywhere near oak, it's uh, been in steel, but as the wine, when the wine is being made, the skins and the juice together, they do a lot of pumping over, it's called, which is where you stay mashing down the grapes, the crushed grapes and the skins into the, the juice in the tanks. So it's getting more and more flavours from the skins, which are giving it that lovely little bit of a, a dry tannin on the edge. This is 13.5% alcohol, I thought so. I thought so, but it doesn't taste heavy. I think the alcohol is just helping to keep that nice dry finish. It's almost a bit of licorice in there. It's quite intriguing. So, as I said, if you like full reds, like a heavy cab, Syrah, you you really like this. And it's got, I think it's got an identity of its own. Yeah, that's, that's a very nice experience. And to round off, we're going to bounce back up to the north of Italy. And we're going to pick up Da Luca's rather nice sparkling rosé. Now, just look at the colour of that in the bottle. It's just most beautiful, pale, pale, transparent pink. So, uh, this brand was launched around 2015, no, 14, I think. And in 2015, it uh, was entered in the A and AD Design Awards, which is a huge design competition, which is held every year. And it won. Uh, a gold medal and what was interesting is that the entries are from all kinds of products uh, where they look for perfection in design it was the only wine brand that year to have won a design so they just loved the very simple little gentle detailing on the top and the fabulous colours of Sicily coming through so I think it's quite a fun brand to play with let's see how this tastes so Beautiful colour, look at that. And we've got little bubbles coming up again. Oh, strawberries. Strawberries, yes. Oh. Very gentle fruit. It's got... It's got some strawberries. More on the nose. And a little bit of gentle flowers, but more like um, when you pinch a rose petal and you, you, you pinch it and then smell your fingers. Very, very gentle. So this is from the north and it's made Glera grapes again. And also there's a little bit of um, Pinot Noir to obviously give us our beautiful, delicate colour. The wines are vinified separately and then they're blended together to get the right proportion of taste and colour and then fermented under pressure uh, in a tank and this is called the Charmat method and this is what puts the bubbles into our sparkling wine. Interesting to note, this is Italian sparkling rosé, it's not Prosecco rosé. You can only have Prosecco from the Prosecco region. This comes, and it must be 100% Clara. This comes from just outside the Prosecco region, but as of the harvest this year, which is happening now in September, October, uh, the authorities have changed the rules so that they will allow Prosecco Rosé, provided that they abide, the producer abides by, the cer by certain rules. So watch out, the Prosecco, the real Prosecco Rosé should be arriving here, probably maybe in time for New Year, we'll see. So you won't tell much of a difference in the taste, it's just that there will be stricter controls on the production. Oh, that's just really, really light and delicate. So, this is the De Luca family. 
and I think it's a great choice for a, a dinner package. You know, you just want a one-stop shop, easy to do. Welcome your guests with a glass of Prosecco. You could have some charcuterie, some uh, antipasto, go do Italian style, a bit of bruschetta, uh, maybe uh, buffalo mozzarella. Uh, move on to the white Pinot Grigio for your first course. What about uh, risotto milanese with some saffron and a nice good glug of white wine into the risotto as well, so it'll keep the theme going. And I think a red, the Nero Davila, is crying out for something like Ossobuco. Slow braised, uh, rich meat, um, yeah, with that lovely depth of flavour. And then, oh, let's have a glass of pink for with dessert. And for that, let's go back to Sicily and have one of the national sweets in Sicily. It's called cannoli. And it's like a little tube of deep fried pasta, uh, pastry, rolled up. And the middle is filled with um, soft ricotta cheese and cream and little candied fruits, sometimes with uh, mascarpone. Oh, absolutely delicious. So there you are. It's a little introduction to Sicily, a great island, great fun. And I think it's perfect dinner party wine. We'll see you all the way through from welcome, first course, second course, dessert, goodbye. I think that's a nice selection. And yeah, that's the tour of Sicily. Uh, just to mention, next week you won't be seeing wine on Line Wednesday. On Wednesday at 7 pm, you'll be seeing gossip from the grapevine. I'll be talking to Fernando Espina of Vigna Chocolan in Chile. So we'll be having a chat about secrets from the vineyards, where the Chocolan winery is, what happens with winemaking in Chile. And while we go through that, we'll be tasting three of their fabulous wines. It's, they're the origin Grand Reserva ones. We'll start with the Chardonnay, uh, then we'll go on to the Carmenere, which is the national grape of Chile. And we'll finish with a Cabernet Franc, which is a very Bordeaux grape and which is actually one of Fernando's personal favourites. So that's next Wednesday at 7 o'clock. The wines are all on special offer through GBI Express or in our retail shop. So hope you can join us for Gossip from the Grapevine next week. Thank you. Good night.